It's been a little while, but we're doing another species spotlight today. And obviously the culprit is this yellow tail Crevo. I know some of you uh, Colubrid fans are really excited for this one and been waiting for a while. So the yellow tail Crevo, originally found in South America and their range is actually pretty large. They extend from the very top northern part of South America, like Venezuela and Colombia, all the way down to the northern part of Argentina. So they span quite a bit, mostly along the western side, not too much uh, into Brazil and areas in Paraguay and areas like that. But these guys are typically found in very heavily forested areas. And that is actually part of their name. So these guys belong to a species or to a genus called Dry Marcon. And in that genus, a lot of species like the different Crebos and the Indigos are present. And in Latin, Dry Marcon actually means Lord of the Forest. And they for sure earn that name. So the Crebos, just like the Indigos, these are some of the longest species of colubrid snake in the New World, i.e. Northern North, Central, and South America, Northern America. And the yellowtails specifically are the longest. There are several recorded and well-documented cases of male yellowtail crebos getting over 10 feet long. And they get their name for a pretty obvious reason, this yellowtail. So with the crebos, there are these very long colubrid snakes and the yellowtail specifically are they're actually fairly varied throughout their range, but they're known for this dark gray, chocolatey brown, almost black color head, all the way down to a bright yellow tail. And obviously in captivity and in the hobby, we selectively breed them for their color and specifically for as dark of head and bodies as we can get to as bright as yellow tails as we can get. Although in their range, they're very variable to where they're almost a unicolor color, uh, similar to the unicolor Crebos, a little bit more brown, um, not quite as bright of a tail to almost neon yellow sometimes. Now, the yellow tails specifically are fairly arboreal. They are the longest of the dry Marcon. They are the, mo they are the most slender, which means that they're more attuned to be found in the trees. And so again, going back to that Lord of the Forest thing, these guys have been found in the lower canopy. They've been found on the ground. They're essentially found all over the place. They are a diurnal species. All of the Crevos are diurnal. And once they get to this very large size, they're very bold and they will eat kind of whatever they want. And that is for sure true. They will eat mammals, they'll eat lizards, they'll eat fish, they'll eat birds, they'll even eat other snakes, including venomous snakes and other Crevos. So they truly do earn that Lord of the Forest title being found everywhere in the forest, not being afraid of a lot of things, as well as eating kind of everything. So the yellowtails, again, specifically, as I said before, they are the longest. They are also well known for being the flightiest and the feistiest, which I don't know why I decided to go with a yellowtail Crebo as my very first drummer con, but evidently that's what I decided to do. They have several different uh, defense mechanisms where He's not doing it at the moment, but he might've been doing it earlier in the video where they'll actually stretch out and, and puff out their necks and make loud hissing noises. They'll do the tail rattling as a lot of other snakes will do. These guys as babies are actually, according to a lot of the breeders that I have spoken to, uh, stress out pretty easily. And so when people in captivity are breeding them, uh, most creep up, most dry Marcon in general, but supposedly specifically the yellow tail Crebos they'll hold on for quite a bit longer than a lot of people will usually hold on to their baby snakes to make sure they're well established. And they actually even recommend uh, putting them in smaller cages to begin with and slowly uh, increasing the size of them to when they're full adults. And while I said that they can reach lengths of over 10 feet, four to six, uh, like four to six feet is more often recorded. Uh, my male, who was not fed as often as many dry Marcon probably should, is just right under six feet long. Um, but again, they can get significantly larger than that. So if you decide you do want to get a yellow toe Crevo, number one, I do recommend a captive born one. Um, they do, will cost more, obviously, but you're getting one that for sure is a little bit more adjusted, a little bit more stable, as well as doesn't have that parasite load that comes with a lot of uh, wild caught animals. Um, eventually, because of their large size, they do need very large caging. 
Um, so, you know, at least six feet long enclosure with plenty of room to climb um, for like the black tails and the eastern indigos, maybe not as vertical, but for the yellows, definitely you want plenty of large places to climb. These guys, while a lot of snakes, they say that they don't necessarily need that UVA, UVB. Um, I have found that he does in fact do and does enjoy that. So he is in a large uh, vivarium, a VE, a vision cage, there we go, VE. Meh. And in there he does have a UVB light and he is fairly active most of the day and kind of active at night too. But in the mid mornings to late afternoons, he does spend time balled up uh, underneath his UV light and the rest of the time he will spend just kind of cruising around looking for food. Dry Marcon as well as like the Pituophis for the, so like the pines and the bulls but specifically these guys have very fast metabolisms for snakes. They eat smaller meals much more often and so that's how we actually end up with an animal who is fully mature as far as age goes but should be significantly larger but because he was essentially fed similar to like a ball python once a week with larger meals instead of smaller, more frequent meals, he didn't quite achieve the length. And that's actually something that a lot of people don't think about immediately is that the growth rates and the feeding regimens of a lot of different species of snakes aren't the same. Boas get fed less, pythons get fed fairly regularly, these guys get fed much more often. They are amazing snakes, but they are not really for the novice keeper. Um, they do require a bit of handling. He's definitely calmed down a little bit. He was pretty wily. He normally moves pretty, he normally doesn't, this is actually probably the calmest he's been, but it's also one of the longest he's been. We were, had him out for a while before the video, but they like to move, they like to cruise. Um, they can be very defensive in their cages. So it takes a little bit of a practice hand to work with these guys. Um, another little fun fact, I know before I mentioned it, like the very large males hit 10 feet. The yellowtail Kribos don't seem to actually be nearly as sexually dimorphic as a lot of the other colubrid and species of snakes in general. So we know that like boas and ball pythons and other pythons, all usually the females are larger. And then in some colubrids like the bull snakes, the pine snakes, and even like the eastern indigos, the males are larger. But with these guys, it seems to be they're pretty close in size. And now that I've had the opportunity with handling other large mature adults, both male and female, that does seem to be the case where the male is a little bit larger, a little bit older, but the female is also significantly larger as well. And my little boy, he's not a runt, he just wasn't necessarily fed the way he should have before we got him, but he's doing pretty good. I do enjoy him quite a bit, and I do look forward to, I don't know if I'll ever get a female to pair him up with. Um, after now working with like the indigos and stuff, they're a little bit more my speed, not to say I don't enjoy him, but that's probably something that I'm moving towards in the future. But these guys, the Lord of the Forest, the Drymarkon, they absolutely deserve that name. These guys are amazing, powerful animals. Um, I did fail to mention before, um, they are actually not constrictor snakes. So, you know, like the boas, the pythons, and even like corn snakes and king snakes, they actually constrict their prey. These guys don't do that. They have very powerful jaws, especially compared to other snakes, their size, especially the size of their head. They essentially just overpower their prey and it can actually be a little, uh, a little intimidating sometimes. But yeah, these guys can get very powerful, very strong bites. They don't really bite too, too much, especially once they become more comfortable with people, but they are an amazing species of snake. He is really cool. My guy may or may not have a bit of like bug eyes, so maybe there is something going on with him because several now Drymarkon people have commented about that, but I still think he's an amazing snake. He is really fun, um, always keeping me on my toes. These guys, these long, powerful, fast moving colubrids are a lot different than a lot of the other species of snake we keep. But hopefully you guys got to enjoy me showing off this amazing animal, this beautiful animal that I don't honestly talk about nearly as much as I should. If anyone has any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know down in the comments. I am not nearly as well versed and experienced with these guys as say the boa constrictors or some python species, but I do love working with these guys and I love the different animals and all the different temperaments and behaviors and all the really fun stuff like that. Again, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please check out all of the other really cool stuff. Check out the full playlist of my species spotlight. I think there's close to almost 40 different species we've covered at this point. If you have any ideas for future species that I haven't hit yet, I am trying to do ones that I can physically show you 
unlike some of my top five lists where I just kind of go over species in general, because when I'm actually talking in length about them, I feel it'd be a little bit better to have them on camera for you to actually really appreciate them until eventually you can find one in person. Hope everyone is having a great day and we'll check you next time.